himself and whatever. But anyway, I got to talking to him. He's kind of in line. And he started off, you know, kind of made small talk, like, where are you at? What are you doing? I said, well, I, I teach at a preschool in our church. He goes, oh, you still go to church, huh? And when we were in high school, he said he was an atheist. And when I talked to him about the Lord, and he would just talk to me about the devil. <laughs> I say God sends those people across our path for a purpose, been to rehab and still the very same way that he's, he is, only the blood of Jesus Christ can liberate and set free. I tried to put that across this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Billy, that come up here, he just got out of rehab down in Florida, paying thousands and thousands of dollars and still has cravings for drugs. Hear me. Can I tell you something? I believe God. God has released that man this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe he broke the chains and shackles in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. Listen, the blood still cleanses and the blood still sets the captives free in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. People have got to set under the word of God and hear the word of God. That we're to preach deliverance to the captives. Can you say that with me were to preach deliverance to the captives. The method is preach deliverance. Can I say it again? Preach deliverance. It's a simple message, hallelujah, to the Lamb. But when we place it, listen, when we, we put our confidence and we put our trust in it, listen to me, that equals salvation and liberation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you give the Lord one more hand clap of praise, glory to God in the name of the Lord? Lord, hallelujah. Many people just like that, what Kristen was talking about. Many, many. And you know what? It, it, it amazes me that they say, why don't you go over to that church at Harvest Field over at Scott? You know why? Because they still know that we believe in the power of God in the name of Jesus, the delivering power of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And can I tell you, listen, whom God sends in here that don't know Know Jesus as Lord and Savior, hallelujah, God will release them and set them free in hallelujah. Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So listen, bless God. People come across your path. You tell them about Jesus. Invite them to church. Bless the Lord. I'll guarantee you, hear me, I'll do my part, or the Lord will do his part. We'll preach the word of the living God, and then we'll see what happens if God validates his word by stretching forth his hand to save and heal and baptize in the Holy Ghost. We'll just just leave that up to the Lord. But God will validate his word if it's truth in Jesus' name. And you'll see the results because the Apostle Paul said, I come not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And when you see people giving their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, look at me. That's a demonstration of the Spirit of God. When you see people stand up and say, thus saith the Lord God and the gifts of the Spirit in operation, that's a demonstration of the Spirit of God, which tells me one thing. Hey, God's in the house. I said God is in the house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Didn't mean to steal your thunder, Christian. Anybody else tonight? Bless God. Marvin. Uh, yeah, Pastor Martin, I wouldn't want to have been here this morning. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I thought about the message and I thought I was my heart. I knew 
very soft for that. Amen. And I hope they can testify something about this. Oh, yeah, we had a great time. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Powerful, powerful services down there. Some things I didn't hear about, but other things, the ministry of the Word of God, uh, uh, some of the things that I didn't care about as a woman danced around up front, kind of like that other woman that was just bouncing around in here, and I had to jump off the pulpit and throw her out. That's the first time I ever threw anybody out of a church, and that was kind of going on, and I thought, you know, I, I was like en Enoch was, and Teresa was down there as well, and, Enoch said, "You know what? I, I wasn't going to let that. I wasn't going to let that steal. I, I, I drove three hours down here not to let the devil steal that away from me." He said, "I just shut my eyes and started glorifying God, and God just started blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If it had been me, I'd have jumped down. I'd have said, "Honey, go on the back of the church and do that if you would, please. Bless the Lord." But that's me. It's not my service. It's their service in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If they want to do it before the Lord. Hallelujah, go up in the back. Why would you want to step out in the front so everybody else can see you and it just draws the attention away from the things of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But anyhow, man, it's such a great time. As I said, and I, I testified Wednesday, uh, you know, great services with uh, Brother uh, uh, Wilson. Uh, man, I'm telling you what, he, he preached a message as unbelievable, preached on the cross of Christ, and then uh, I can't think of the woman and man's name, Enoch, what, what? Wagers. Wagers, that's it. Brother and sister Wagers, I'm going to try to get them in for maybe on a Sunday morning, Sunday night. I know they'll bless the congregation, hallelujah. Both of them preach. They're like a tag team, they're husband and wife, and man, I'm telling you, can they preach in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. And I know that they would be a blessing to this church in Jesus' name. So look for them to come in here, you know, very shortly. Very, within, with the... Was she saying look here? Huh? Was she saying look here now? Yeah. She did that a lot. Look yeah. here. Look yeah. She's a, she's a great teacher. A great teacher. Some people don't believe in women preachers or teachers, but can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Listen, God has touched many women with the anointing of the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a blessing they can be in the house of God. I believe the churches need to loose their women in Jesus' name. I remember one person when we back, it's been years back, uh, man, he just loved the services and, and what have you, and uh, he didn't care about my wife teaching, and therefore he, he moved out of the church, and I proceeded to talk to him about women, and I said, man, you need to do a study in the Word of God. Bless the Lord of all the women Hallelujah, that ministered before the Lord. Bless the Lord forevermore. But anyhow, but bless God, uh, brother and sister Wager, they, 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 got a, uh, they carry a dynamic anointing. He sings, plays the, the keyboard, and she preaches and teaches. And of course, he preaches and teaches as well. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. He's an old timer. I want to warn you ahead of time, he's an old timer, and they certainly believe in holiness. They certainly believe in purity. They don't believe in silliness. Hello. They don't believe in silliness going on in the churches today. And they say, man, they've been across the nation. And they, they said, it's just a shame. And I've I'm, I'm, I'm never seen a woman so humble in all my life. She has sat and, and, and listened to uh, Brother Wilson preach and, and literally bawl all through the service. The brokenness within her. And they said, you know, we, we, we go into many churches across the United States of America. And he said, very few churches ever even mention the blood or the cross of Christ. They don't want you to mention those things. What a shame. I said, what a shame. But thank God there is churches that opened up the doors. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord that still believe in an old-fashioned message. Jesus saves. Jesus. Jesus heals, Jesus baptizes in the Holy Ghost, and this is one of them in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand, clap of praise? <laughs> Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Of course, Enoch got to sing down there. I don't know what happened after that, Enoch. Did you get to sing again? Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Bless the Lord. 
But we had a great time down there. Bless God forevermore. Anybody else tonight? Bless the Lord before we get into the Word. family members and stuff that, you know, wasn't serving God, and my brother was one of them, and last year I remember giving a testimony that he got baptized, and his family's going to church regularly, and now he just told me that he's going the calling in the ministry, Amen. and his pastor's already come to him after he was talking to his Praise brother about it, hmm. and his pastor's going to mentor him, and I just thank God for that. Oh, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Give the Lord one more hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Good to see Matt's dad in church this morning. Bless the Lord. Matt invited him to church, and guess what? He come. What a, what a service to be in. I, 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 does your, is your dad saved, Matt? Yeah, he goes to church. Okay. But uh, he was talking to me outside when we went out, and he said, man, he said, great service. Bless the Lord forevermore. And, uh, of course, Amber's mother and dad, and, and I know your dad pretty well, Amber, and and he said, man, oh man, he said, you know, a powerful service. And he, he was saying, you know, that his church, he said in his church, he said, we got a great preacher, but it just seems like nobody wants to come to church anymore. Nobody wants to go to church. Uh, how many know that, man, you know, <laughs> hallelujah, for a preacher to preach, you got to have people to preach to. Not now you want to go out and preach to the squirrels. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah to the lamb. But anyhow, oh, we just thank the Lord for the presence of God flowing and moving through the service this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Anybody else tonight? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Matt? You know, it was funny, too, because with that, I know it hit his heart because he was walking out here, and I seen, you know, his eyes were all watery and everything. Uh, I, know, I know that hit him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Awesome. You know what? Never forget it. I never forget the presence of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I've said it many times, it could be dangerous if you step into this church because you, your life could just change. You could just get right before God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. Not saying that your dad's not right with the Lord. You know, he's made a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? There's just something a little bit different. When the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the power of God Almighty and the freedom and liberty that you have to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Look at me. Let us never let it dry up in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. Praise the Lord. Enoch. I just got to say one thing. Uh, the Lord put on my mind this evening. You know, I'm, I'm going to take one of your statements. I'll say it before. Go ahead. But I think everyone ought to be truly thankful and, and give God praise and glory for a man like you. And it's it grieves me to say it, but I think it's rare that you find a man like you, a man and woman that will stand for truth and not be intimidated by the worldly things and, and give us the true gospel. And you know what? I, I, I just pray that God gives you many more years because the people of this world need to hear what you have got put through you and you're obedient to the Lord to give it to us. And I thank God for it. I appreciate those kind words, but I know that in myself, I'm nothing. It's the Holy Spirit in us. We're just mere men, hear me, and women filled with the Holy Spirit and desire to see God move in the hearts and lives of every individual in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We take no, no glory to ourselves, but all glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Jeff. I know, Pastor, that part of my prayer time has been for you and Mrs. Terry and the church to let us be reminded that we are on the right path. Amen. And sometimes the devil makes you think you're on the wrong path. Right. And you're like, you know, I think the Holy Spirit encouraged us to say, press on. Amen. Press on. Keep right on going, press into the kingdom for such a time as this, in the name of the Lord. Why? Because it's just about home yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, man, I know it. But it's just around the corner. It's just about home time. I was watching a program just before I come to church or before I took my nap and it was talking about the end of the world and, and uh, some of the things that's going to, that they, they say that's going to happen in the end times. And, and of course, when, when I was viewing some of this, they was talking about asteroids coming out and hitting the, hitting the, the, the world and, and literally wiping whole cities and towns and, and things off the earth and, and, and 
falling into the ocean and causing severe uh, tsunamis, you know, to literally wash uh, cities and people uh, completely away. And some would say, you know, I don't believe that could ever happen. Well, it has happened. It has happened. If you go out to Arizona, you can see where, where meteorites hit out in Arizona. And uh, they, they even think that even like, like an asteroid hit, and that's where the Ice Age come in, where all the, the dinosaurs and, and all those uh, 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 prehistoric animals, listen, hallelujah, was literally covered up with ash. Stop and think of this. And we know that there was dinosaurs on the face of the earth. Amen. Something had to take place. Something had to take place, listen, to wipe that whole generation off. Stop and think of this and start over again. Praise the Lord. So it can happen and it will happen in the great tribulation. I'm glad I'm on my way to heaven. I'm glad when the trump sounds I'm out of here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The doomsdays, doomsdayer, bless the Lord. They can get in their bunkers. They can store up all their food they want. Look at me. You can't hide from God. I said you can't hide from God. Bless the Lord forevermore. While this world is gone through chaos, you and I are going to be seated at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Just having a hey old day. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one that saved me by his grace. What a day, a glorious day that will be. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get into the word tonight. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. I want us to look at something here, if we would please, talking about the weapons of our warfare. Hallelujah. Many know, you've heard through this, you've heard this many times and probably studied it many times, but listen to what it says here. Finally, my, let's read it together. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Now look at me for for just a second, all of our strength lies in Christ Jesus. It's none of me, but it's all of him. Understand me. We're, no, we're, uh, we're nothing compared to the devil and his power. But we're everything with Christ in us. We are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens me and strengthens you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, why do you suppose Paul is preaching to the church at Ephesus and saying, Hey, you know what? You've got to put on some weaponry. You know the reason why he's telling them? He said, Because you're going to have a warfare. We're in a fight, we're in a war. And the cost of that war is eternal salvation. You see, the devil's out to steal, destroy, and kill and try to pull us back into our old ways. But thank God we've got weapons of warfare in Jesus' name that we can wage war against the powers and principalities of hell. And somebody said, Amen. Now listen to what he says here in, in, the, in the 12th verse. He says, For we wrestle not against our neighbors and against my wife, and against my brother and sister in the Lord. Come on, help me. Is that what it says? No, it don't say that at all. But can I tell you something? Sometimes, the Lord, listen, the devil can use the husband, he can use the wife, he can use the brother or sister in the Lord. We've seen that Wednesday night when, listen, Peter tried to thwart the plan of God when Jesus said, I must suffer, die, and go to the cross. And Peter says, not so, Lord, and rebuke the Lord. And the Lord looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan, at... One time, in an instant's time, Peter, listen, said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, inspiration, revelation, and then the next verse of Scripture, he's rebuking the Lord. You see, Satan can use Christians as well as he can use, listen, those that aren't even saved. And, my, and, and understand me, much of, 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 of chaos that goes on in the church is because Satan uses Christians to stir up trouble in the house of God. And Paul says we're not ignorant of his devices. 
And we as being children of God, we, we cannot be ignorant of his devices when envy, strife, jealousies, different things come in. You know, listen, it's not the person or the personality of the person. You know that there's a spirit behind it. Hear me. Even when I stand behind the pulpit or I'm standing behind this, this, this platform, hear me. Hallelujah. There's a spirit behind what I'm saying. Some of your conversations, look at me, there's a spirit behind your conversations. It's either the Holy Spirit or it's the spirit of the world. One of the two. Hallelujah. Now listen what he says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this, wor- of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now understand, hear me, we are in a real warfare. Hear me, we'll not escape this warfare until we go on home to be with Jesus, until we have our glorified bodies. Satan will always shoot his fiery darts at you and at me and at his church, especially if the church is moving forward with the things of the Lord. If people are getting saved in the house of God, if people are being healed in the house of God, if people are being, listen, if people are being baptized in the Holy Spirit, look at me, I'll guarantee you the devil's just around the corner. Looking to launch his attack to stop the move of God Almighty. But I I'm speaking to a body of believers, hallelujah, that are suited up and ready for the battle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And I say glory to God forever and ever and ever. God only knows, hear me, that much of the church world don't even believe there's a devil. Stop and think of this, hallelujah. Like that woman was saying to Christian or that guy, why don't you go over there to harvest field? Bless the Lord. Why? Because there's a spirit in this house. It's the spirit of the living God to set the captives free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You can go into some churches and there's no more spirit there than than the man in the moon. Are you hearing me? They don't believe in no devil, don't believe in in the spiritual things of God, don't even believe in a spiritual world, don't believe in the supernatural. But can I tell you something? According to Scripture, bless God, there is a supernatural warfare going on even as we're speaking in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And understand, we're not not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against the powers and principalities of hell. But can I tell you something? We are the winners. I said we are the winners. I refuse to step into the losing circle when God has ordained that we be victorious in all situations and all all circumstances in the name of the Lord. It might not look like I'm a winner at times, but can I tell you something? You know as well as I do, I read the end of the book and it looks, look what it says. It says we win. I said we win. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you don't give up, God won't give up on you. Hello. As long as we stay in there, as long as we hang in there, as long as we keep interceding and keep praying, bless the Lord forevermore, God will see to it that he will bring us through our valleys. He'll bring us through, listen, uh, uh, the fiery furnaces. He'll bring us into his presence in the sweet by and by. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I have no intentions of giving up, have no intentions of shutting up, and have no intentions, hear me, child of God, of throwing the towel in. Bless the Lord. He's brought us this far. He can take us the the rest of the way home. And somebody said amen and amen. Look what he says here, 13th verse. Wherefore, hear me, what does he say? Take unto you what the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In other words, he's saying, man, this warfare is going to become intense in the evil day. And brothers and sisters, only those that are sold out to God are going to stand on the winning side. Because many will cave in and give up. Listen, because they have no persistent prayer life. Many will back up. Many will shut up. Listen, because of the intensity of the warfare that goes on just before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
but I have decided to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore and evermore. Now look what he says. Stand, uh, he said, uh, uh, standing therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. Everybody say, everybody say, shield of faith and sword of the Spirit. One more time. Shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. The shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts of the enemy. Hallelujah. When the devil comes at you, just throw up that shield of faith. Hallelujah. And then pull out that saber, which is the word of God. What did Jesus use in the wilderness temptation? He didn't argue with the devil. He didn't compromise with the devil. He said it is written and made a steadfast commitment and stood on the word of the living God. Can I tell you something? If it was good enough for Jesus, if it's good enough for Paul, if it's good enough for Peter and all the apostles, it's good enough for us. Let us stand on the word of God and let us speak forth the word of God in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen tonight. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I like this part in the 18th verse, praying always. Can you say that with me? Praying always. A praying church will be a church under attack. Hello. Satan don't like a praying church. Anytime a church begins to pray and seek the face of God, mark my words, Satan will attack that church. And hear, hear me. If Families are being attacked. If people are being attacked, look at your prayer life. Hallelujah. You've decided I'm going to follow Jesus. You've decided I'm going to get close to Jesus. And all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose on you. An attack that you've never seen before comes against you. And you go, what in the world is this? Lord, I've made a decision. I'm going to follow hard after you. My heart depends after you. And it seems like, like all Hades has come out against me. Can I tell you something? Look at me. You're on the right track. The church is on the right, right track. Hallelujah to the Lamb. When the enemy comes against the household of God. But can I tell you something? If you've got people that's not praying, you've got people that don't care about their their, their salvation with the Lord. You got people that just come in to do a duty before God. Can I tell you something? The devil has no problem with that church. That church is hunky-dory. Are you hearing me? You know why? Because there's no threat to the kingdom. He knows there's nobody going to get saved. He knows, listen, nobody's going to get on fire for God. He knows those things. So therefore, he leaves those, those alone. And he goes to the one that's seeking the face of God. There might not be many in that church. But my Lord, they're praying constantly and continuously. Lord, send down the latter rain in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it seems like, listen, it seems like a flood of, of, of problems come our direction. But can I tell you, hallelujah, that's a good indication. Everything's going to be all right and you're on the right track in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Or somebody say, I ain't praying no more. I ain't praying no more. And folk, that's what a lot of people are going to do in the end time. They're going to give up their prayer life. And we'll get into this a little bit. They're going to give up because of, of, of diabolical uh, 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 attacks from the enemy and because they don't see the answer to the prayer when they should see the answer to the prayer they toss the towel in. You know why? Because they're listening to the wrong voice. They're listening to the voice of the devil saying, God's not hearing and God's not answering your prayers. Folk, God is looking for hearts that says, God, no matter what, if I don't get an answer to this prayer, I'm still going to serve you. Come on, church. I'm still going to serve you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. 
Bless God. If my body don't get healed, I'm still going to praise you and glorify you, my God. You know my heart. I'm not giving in and I'm not caving in in the name of the Lord Jesus. I know that you'll hold me and sustain me in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. If God don't bless me from this time forward, I'm still going to serve him. You know why? Because who else has words of eternal salvation? Who else, listen, hallelujah, holds the key to hev the heavenly kingdom? Who else? None other. You ain't going to find it in the world. You're not going to find it in Buddha. You're not going to find it in Muhammad. You're not going to find it in Allah. Hear me, child of God. It's found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus asked his disciples, will you leave me? And they said, where else can we go to, Lord? Who else has words of eternal salvation? You see, there's got to be a steadfast determination in our hearts and in our lives. Bless God. He's the one that started this race, and he's the one that's going to finish it for me in Jesus' name. But you see, if there's not a steadfast faith, it's kind of like going on a diet. Hallelujah. New Year's, listen, everybody goes out by his uh, uh, weightlifting uh, um, uh, exercise. exercise stuff. Hear me, your Slim Jims, the this, that, and the other. By the time spring hits and garage sales hit, you can pick these things up for a dime a dozen. And they paid good, good money for it. But you see, in the beginning, they was persistent but after a while, it gets old. Are you hearing me? And you say, well, it's not going to hurt, you know, to skip one day. One day leads to two days. Three days, or, or three days leads to four days. Four days lead to five days. The next thing you know, you've got dust on that exercise equipment. And you think in your mind, one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to go back there. Hear me. But folk, if we're not persistent, look at me, things don't happen. If you want a, a, a lean machine body, so to speak, you got to stick with it. Amen? How many people do we have working out in here? Tony? Josh, you still work out? No. <laughs> John? Bless the Lord. Enoch works out? Started. Hang in there, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll come around in six months and buy that stuff off of you. No. <laughs> yeah, just cancel it. That's the way to go right there. Bless the Lord. But understand, you're not going to develop muscles by looking at the machine and say, oh man. And you go in and look in your body and you go, wow, man, am I. Look at that. Man, look at those guns. Oh, man. You know what? You're not, going to, you're not going to develop anything until you put it to use. Hallelujah. When you put force against those muscles, hear me, child of God, then it builds your body. Can I bring that into the spiritual? Hallelujah. That's what tests and trials are all about. Hallelujah. It puts force against our faith to trust God, to believe God, hallelujah, to the Lamb. And it builds our spiritual muscles in the name of the Lord. But a lot of times we get lazy. We call them lazy Christians. Amen? Lazy. We don't exercise those spiritual muscles like we should be exercising those spiritual muscles. We know the Word of God. We know we should read the Word of God. We know we should should pray, but yet we just don't do it, but yet we think we are spiritual heroes. Hear me, folk. Bless the Lord. You see, the devil, he's not all-knowing, but he knows a few things. God's only all-knowing. But he can look through our cellophane shield. If it's phony. How do you know that, Pastor Martin? Because remember the seven sons of Sceva? Remember that story? Paul, he was casting out devils, and these boys started exercising devils and trying to cast them out, and the devil began to speak to them and said, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who in the world are you, turkeys? 
I don't know you at all. And the devil jumped on them and beat them half silly, stripped them naked, and they ran down the street streaking. That's what the devil would do to phonies. But can I tell you something? When you got a church full of the power of God Almighty, and I emphasize full of the power of God Almighty, when you got a church, hallelujah, that sets time aside to pray and seek the face of God. When you've got a church that, listen, gets into the word of God and fellowships with the Lord, hallelujah to the Lamb. Can I tell you something? You have got a dynamo in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the devil don't like that in Jesus' name. He don't like it. So therefore, hear me, child of God, he'll do anything and everything he can do to sidetrack you to get away from from your prayer closets, get away from the word of God, hear me, hallelujah, so that he can windle you down. And understand, just like Paul said, we're not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Sometimes, you know, he'll keep working and working and working and working. We don't like to give him glory. But understand, hear me, he'll just keep coming and coming and coming, trying to wear you out. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah, as long as we stay in Christ. Christ will fight the battle for us in Jesus' name. I remember casting the devil out of a young lady in the old church. And I'm telling you what, the sweat was coming out of me. I was rebuking. The devil wasn't, the devil wasn't buking. I was doing everything I could possibly do. I told the people, get the blood songs out. Let's sing about the blood of Jesus. I was doing everything. Hallelujah. And this devil was speaking to me through using her vocal cords and said, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you, I hate you. Can I tell you something? The devil hates every Christian. And I clued the church in and said, listen, if you're not full of the Holy Ghost, I, I, I would advise you to just step out of the church. Can I tell you? I think I had a few takers on that. But understand something. The sweat was pouring off of me and the devil spoke to me and said, I will wear you out. And he don't know how close he was to the truth. I was ready to give up. But can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Jesus come along at the right time. And can I tell you the power of God fell in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and set that gal free in Jesus' name. We give God praise and glory and honor. Now understand me. Hallelujah. They went to a different church. But understand something. That church didn't believe in the power of God. Guess what? what they tried everything in the book and they snuck over on a Sunday night and said honey won't you go on in there hello we don't want to be tagged as Pentecostals we don't want to be tagged as religious nuts but can I tell you something there's a lot of people that are demon possessed and the only hope that they have is a church that believes in the power of God Almighty that can release them and set them them free in Jesus name my Lord somebody ought to shout in this house in the name of the Lord Jesus praise God and I've just got a funny feeling turn to somebody say hey pastor's got a funny feeling we're going to see some deliverances in this house hello and I trust I trust that you're full of God you're full of the Holy Spirit hallelujah you know why because you'll be the ones casting the devils out of them in the name name of Jesus. Some would say, oh Lord, not me. Not me. Well, can I tell you something? Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. In my name they shall cast out devils. He didn't say the preachers. He said the believers in Jesus' name. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. If, hey, I want to tell you something. Some would say, well, the devil's messing in my house. Get up and cast the devil out of your house. Cast him out of the family in the name of Jesus. You've got the power. You've got the authority. Jesus gave that delegated authority to you and to me to exercise it. Well, I just don't know. I've got to get the preacher over here. I've got to get the priest over here to exercise this demon in my house. Can I tell you something? If you're a believer and you're full of the Holy Ghost, 
Ghost, bless God, get up, square your shoulders back and tell the devil, get out in the name of Jesus. This house is sanctioned for the glory of God Almighty and I plead the blood in every room of this house in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen today, man. We've got the power in Jesus' name and God is restoring the power back to the house of God in this end time dispensation in the name of the Lord. I feel new power surging through us. I asked the Lord just the other day, I said, God, Hallelujah, I just don't want the anointing. But Lord, give me a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, the preach and minister the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to seal, see the, the, the sinner saved and to seal, see the sick healed and see those that are desiring the infilling of the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to cast out devils in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this? I believe God's going to give me the desire of my heart because it's not, listen, a selfish desire. It's a desire to advance the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You'd be surprised the calls that I get come from Van Wert. And I'm telling you what, some of these are, are, are people that are well known. Calling up on the phone and saying, hey, will you pray for me? I know I'm under some type of demonic attack. I say, won't you come to the house of God so we can pray? Oh, my, I can't do that. If people know I come up there, they would crucify me. Well, I tell you what, when you get bad enough, you won't care about what people think. You just want deliverance in the name of the Lord. Oh, my Lord, somebody ought to just shout anyhow in the name of Jesus. And can I tell you, listen, I believe people are getting fed up and fed up or being fed up and sick and tired of being sick and tired sick and tired of being harassed by the powers and principalities of hell and God is releasing them from these dead stagnated churches to come into the house of God where they find freedom, where they find peace and where they find liberty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And can I tell you, I believe there's peace in this house in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. You see, just not too long ago, the devil said, you know what? This church has gone down the tubes. It's not coming back back but can I tell you something the devil's a liar we're seeing more souls saved now than what we've ever had we've seen people leave and God brings four or five more families in you know what it's kind of like flies in a house you know what you open up the screen five fly out and five fly in you ever do ever notice that I, I hate flies because they're of the devil <laughs> bells of Bub, he's the prince of flies. I hate flies, and, and, and I, I, my wife, uh, you know, when, when you open, we're out the campground, you open up the camper door, and especially when it's cool like this, they're looking for someplace warm to get into. And man, you open that door, and they just go, and I'm in there with a fly swatter doing one of these numbers. Hallelujah. I hate flies. I hate the devil. And you know what? I found out one thing too. He hates me. He even told me so. Through a person. Hear me. Hallelujah. The devil never did like you and he never will like you as long as you serve God. So let's get over it. Hallelujah. Let's suit up with the armor of God and let's storm the gates of hell because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the blood-bought, blood-washed, sanctified, glorified church of the living God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. My Lord, God is awakening a sleeping giant. And that's his church for a season. The five are the ten virgins. Hallelujah, five was, five, five was wise and five was foolish and they all slumbered and slept, slept for a a season, even the wise slumbered and slept. But the clock is striking to the midnight hour. And the Holy Spirit is knocking on heart's doors and saying, get up, church. Arise, shine, for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you this day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't wait to Sunday morning. Amen. 
I can't wait to Wednesday, hear me, hallelujah, to the Lamb. I can't wait to minister the Word of God to see who's going to get saved, who's going to get healed, who's going to get delivered in Jesus' name. Why? Because I believe God is speaking to a whole host of people out there. Bless the Lord. And soon and very soon, hear me, child of God, we'll see the desired results of our praying and our persistency in praying for loved ones that we're believing to get saved in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Do you realize we, uh, we've got power to place a, 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 a prayer hedge around about our loved ones? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Do you realize that we've got power to bind and we've got power to loose? Whatsoever things we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever things we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God has given us the keys to his kingdom. Stop and think of this. Hallelujah. We are his body in this present day and age. I believe we need to be piercing the darkness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I say this to the church? Let's get up, church, and let's suit up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's put on the whole armor of God and let's storm the gates of hell and let's pull people out of the clutches of hell itself in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's not just rattle our sword, so to speak, but let us do action. Let us go for it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, and 3 through 5 says, For the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. You see, he's not saying that, listen, to the heavenly kingdoms. The heavenly kingdoms know that, that, that God is all powerful and all control. But he's saying it to the church. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, you're not going to fight the devil with carnal means. He'll go through that like a, like a buzzsaw. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. It's not man's ingenuity. It's not man's program, but it's through God Almighty, through the power of the cross of Jesus Christ, that liberates and sets the captives free in Jesus' name. Let the boo birds come out and boo. Let the scoffers scoff and let the mockers mock. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord forevermore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to get happy here tonight. Bless God. James 5, 16, it says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Much power is released when God's people begin to pray. I've said it many times. A prayerless church is a powerless church. But a praying church is a power, powerful church. Hear me. Bless the Lord. And I trust that everyone in here has a sufficient prayer life in Jesus' name. And as I said before, Satan will target praying people and praying saints. I, I believe, who was it? John Knox or one of them. They said, Said something uh, I forget how how they worded it, but they said uh, uh, I believe it was one of the Queen of England. She said they they fear the prayers of of John Knox more than any military might in the world. Can I tell you something? The devil fears the prayers of God's people if they're sincere in the right. name of Jesus. Right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Why do you suppose he took out prayer in the school? Stop and think of this. And you know what? We can't harp on the schools if we're not praying at home. Am I right? We can't harp about that if, we're not, if we don't have a secured prayer life at home. Hallelujah to the Lamb. They're not stopping us from praying at home. While we still got our freedoms here in the United States of America, let us exercise our freedoms unto godliness and righteousness 
righteousness and purity. Let us exercise our authority, God-given authority, against the powers and principalities of hell in the name of the Lord Jesus. And somebody said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. In Luke 18, 1, it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Men not must... Uh, men, it says, and he spake a parable, that, uh, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Hallelujah. The Greek word for faint is lack courage, lose heart, and give up. Lack courage, lose heart, and give up. Listen to what Dake's commentary says in this. He says, do not give in to doubt, fear, unbelief, discouragement. How many have ever gave in to that? I've been there and I've done it. And you know what? It don't help a bit. Or use excuses for unbelief when prayer is not answered immediately. Rebuke and resist all opposition to the answer and all suggestions of a failure. It is a divine blood-bought right to get an answer, so do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. Brothers and sisters, understand something. When we begin to pray, you might as well expect retaliation. Retaliation is going to come when you begin to pray. I heard one person that used to come to this church, he said, I never had no problem with the devil until I started coming to this church. Stop and think of this a second. And he quit coming to church. The guy wasn't saved, but almost got saved. And the devil did everything he possibly do to get him out. And he did. But he said, I never had no problem until I come here. You know why? Because he's getting the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the devil wanted, to, wanted him out. And can I tell you something? The reason why a lot of people run out is because the devil, listen, has such a hold in their hearts that they run from the presence of God. But you can't out, I've said it many times, you can't outrun run the Lord. Amen? When God's got your number, look at me, you might as well just give up because the hound of heaven's going to put you in a tree someplace. And you're going to have to make that decision either to accept him or reject him, one of the two. Bless the Lord forevermore. But we can about expect retaliation when we begin to pray. Bless the Lord. A couple of years back, my wife and I said, you know what? I'm not watching this program. It was, uh, 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 what was the name of that? Criminal Minds or something like that. Criminal Minds. And I was kind of like into that, that, that criminal stuff. And I was watching that and the Lord spoke to me one time and he said, he said you know what? You don't have a criminal mind. You got the mind of Christ. You don't need to be watching that. So you know what? I said, you know what? I'm not going to watch that. And I made a consecration to the Lord that I'm going to do everything that I possibly do to get in the presence of God and let the fire of God fall through me. And can I tell you something? All hell launched out on me at that time. All different attacks from all different directions come out against us. And there's times I thought, what in the world is going on? God, I've set a consecration. Hallelujah, to seek your face. But man, it seems like all I'm getting is bad, 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 bad. Anybody ever been there before? And brother, I went through a severe testing, hear me. And I know what I'm talking about when I'm teaching and preaching the messages what we're preaching, hear me. We are in a spiritual war. Bless God forevermore. But understand me, hallelujah to the Lamb. God will see us through as long as we trust Him, as long as we put our faith and our confidence in what He did at the cross of Calvary and not be moved away from it. Bless God. God will see us through our crisis in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as long as we put Christ in the Christ crisis in Jesus name and somebody said amen. amen hallelujah we learn not to lean to our own understanding but to trust in God with all of our hearts and he brings us through in the name of the Lord hallelujah in Isaiah 59 19 Isaiah 59 19, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit 
of the Lord shall lift a standard against him. Now, if you read that, I believe it's in the original Greek, the King James, they put the comma in the wrong place. Let's read it like this. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift a standard against him. Boy, there's a great difference. There's a great difference. When the enemy comes in, when he's coming and attacking you, the Spirit of the Lord, like a flood, will raise a standard against the enemy in Jesus' name. I come not, hallelujah, listen, in my own strength, I come not in my own power, but I come in the strength and the might of God Almighty, just like David said, hallelujah. I don't come in my own strength, but I come in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And can I tell you something? Devils fall. Giants topple. Hear me. Fires are quenched in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But understand, when you pray, retaliation will come about. It'll come about. You can about expect it. I'm going to close with this, although I could preach a little longer remember Pharaoh and the deliverance of the children of Israel and Moses the Lord gave Moses a message to preach to Pharaoh and that message was you go and tell Pharaoh let my people go let my people go a type of spiritual bondage let my people go what did Pharaoh do you see Pharaoh was a type of the enemy he said, I don't know your God, and I'm not letting your people go. And besides that, I'm going to make the tally of bricks that they're supposed to get. I'm just going to double the workload on them. Just the opposite of what Moses preached to him. Retaliation. Somebody say retaliation. Instead of things getting better, they got worse. Somebody say, praise God. Put a smile on your face. Because weeping may endure for the night, but great deliverance comes in the morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You're on the right track. I said, you're on the right track. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, I'm not letting them go. And you know what? Because of diabolical opposition that come against Moses and Aaron, they begin to question the Lord. God, we did what you told us to do, and you didn't show up. Matter of fact, things got worse. And the Lord just said, shut up. Now you're going to see my hand stretch forth over Pharaoh, and my people will be released and set free. Understand? Stand me, child of God. We might weep for a season, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Maybe the answer to your prayer has not come about as of yet. Maybe it got worse. My God, you're on the right track. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your hands and say, Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. I just double dog dare you to say, I'm on the right track. You see, when the devil says you're not saved, you know you're saved. When the devil says you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you just made something up, you know you got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hello, come on, somebody say amen. When the devil says your prayer is not being answered, look at me, your prayer is being answered. My Lord, he gives himself away. He gives himself away. But you see, if we operate out of what we see, if we operate about what we feel, if we operate about what we hear, look at me, we'll fall prey to his tricks. But if we flow and operate in what he says, <laughs> you're going to hit the mark of the prize of the high calling. The answer to the prayer is going to come about in Jesus' name. And somebody said, amen and amen. I say this, hallelujah, ain't God good? I said, ain't God good? Bless the Lord forevermore. Just an introduction. We could preach for another hour in here tonight. Hear me. I'm serious, I could. 
Bless the Lord. But hear me, folk. I believe God is rallying his troops just like he rallied Gideon. Hallelujah, thou mighty man of valor. Can I tell you something? He's speaking to Harvest Field and say, Harvest Field, thou mighty church of valor. Get up, for with you I will rout the enemy in Jesus' name. Can't you feel that, child of God? Bless God. Hallelujah. Don't you want to be a part of the army of the Lord God Almighty? Understand something. We're going to come back. Listen with the captain of our salvation. Listen and do battle against the army of army, uh, Antichrist armies. Why not do battle now against the powers and principalities of hell in the name of Jesus? Get up and kick the devil out of your affairs in Jesus' name. And somebody said, Amen and Amen. Bless the Lord. I said this before, here goes Enoch, but it bears repeating. In my former church, my former pastor, a woman come in and said, you know what, the devil's just running havoc in my, our house. Hallelujah, and I don't know what to do. And he said, get up and kick the devil out. And he said, it's my husband. <laughs> it's my husband. Can I tell you something? The devil likes to use people. And it could be your husband, could be your wife, could be your son, your daughter, it could be anybody. But can I tell you something? You've got power to bind those things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Exercise what God has given to you as a body of the Lord. He didn't leave us down here defenseless. We just read about the suit of armor. I just told you, listen, about hallelujah, we can tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Bless God. It all boils down to this one thing. Do we believe this? Do we believe the word of God? Hallelujah. I believe we're going out of here victorious. I believe we're going out of here, listen, out of the church, listen, with power and with authority. Because God is not coming back for a defeated church. He's coming back for a victorious church bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, victory, victory, victory in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Glory to God. Stand up if you would please. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, come on. Give the Lord a hand. Clap of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands towards heaven. Father, I thank you that we're endowed with power. I thank you that we're endowed with authority in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, hallelujah, that you begin to move in our hearts and in our lives. That we believe what the word of God tells us to do. And what the Word of God says about us, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Hallelujah, that we do have power over the principalities of hell itself. And God, I thank you and I praise you, Father. Hallelujah, for a double anointing to rest upon this church and this congregation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many deliverances need to take place, Father, in the future. And I thank you and I praise you, God, as you're rearing a church up of power, a church up of praise, a church up of authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we say thank you, God, that I'm a part of this end time dispensation in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody in the house said amen and amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't forget, keep my wife in prayer. She's going to California this week uh, for a week. Bless the Lord. Keep her in prayer for traveling mercies, flying on the airplane, and let you just have a great time with her sister. Sisters out in California in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Lord bless you guys. Hallelujah.